From a technological standpoint, this is the best time to be alive and the easiest time to make money as well. We don't think you guys really grasp the amount of opportunities at your disposal, so that's why we're making this video. We'll go from the very basics of e-commerce to more complex topics like crypto stacking and the future of the internet. Let's get started. Number 1. E-commerce Alright, let's get this out of the way first, since it's the most straightforward way to use technology to earn money. This has evolved so much in the past few years that even your grandma could sell mittens from her phone with little to no assistance. E-commerce platforms have automated pretty much every part of the selling process, and they made it stupid simple to sell anything. A quick example of one market that skyrocketed during the pandemic was puzzles. Those people who said they would take the time to learn how to bake bread and play the piano eventually quit and started buying puzzles left and right. Now that you think about it, you could have made a website selling drop-shipped puzzles in one morning while drinking your coffee. So the next time a situation like this presents itself, which by the way is pretty much every day, here's a little help from us. Use Shopify since it's by far the easiest and most straightforward e-commerce platform out there. You can go to alux.com slash sell and get our special discount, driving your initial costs even lower. Number 2. Live Streaming If you don't realize live streaming is the next color TV, you've been living under a rock with no Wi-Fi. Just look at the jump in Twitch searches last year. Big manufacturers are also selling streaming kits to make the process even easier. Not that you would need that kind of tech. But speaking of that, have you ever heard of VTubers? Now that's a super cool way to use technology and content creation. Should we do a dedicated video on that? Let us know in the comments. Now it must be said that the competition is huge and you're going after the valuable time of your viewer, especially at peak hours. What you do get, however, is a clear monetization system. People subscribe, you get paid. To give you an idea of how profitable streaming is, there's this saying between professional eSport players. You reach the peak of your career when you go into full live streaming. That's where the real money is. Unlike platforms like Twitch, however, subscribing on YouTube is free, so why don't you show us some support and casually hit that subscribe button? It actually helps us out a lot. Number 3. Clubhouse Are you in the cool kids club yet? If you haven't heard about Clubhouse, it's the place where Elon Musk schooled the Robinhood CEO for stopping retailers from buying GME stocks. You might have heard the story. If not, look it up, it's a damn good listen. Since its initial launch, Clubhouse kind of dropped in popularity among users, so why do we mention it? Well, two reasons. It's still in the early stages, so every time you get a chance to be an early adopter, you should take it. And two, they just implemented a payment system where users can tip their favorite host, with 100% of the tips going to the creator. This means if you have something to say and you find a reason for people to listen to you, Clubhouse could be the perfect environment for you. We actually made a dedicated video about Clubhouse, which you can watch by clicking in the top right corner. Number 4. Paid Subscriptions Patreon, OnlyFans, and Substack are just some examples of paid subscriptions. Through these sites, members can earn a monthly salary by receiving money from their members. And speaking of OnlyFans, have you heard about the story of the mother who got her kid expelled from Catholic school because the fathers found out about her OnlyFans account? We wonder what the fathers were doing on OnlyFans to begin with. By the way, the mother said she was earning around $150,000 a month on the platform. Another example, Jordan Peterson, the Canadian psychologist who we actually featured in our video 15 Things You Didn't Know About Jordan Peterson, he's a Patreon member too. When he joined in August 2016, he was earning roughly $1,000 a month. Pretty soon after, he was earning $14,000 a month, and these days he's earning roughly a million dollars per year through Patreon. Basically, what these platforms are doing is giving a clear monetization plan for content creators. Number 5. Crypto 
Yes, we hear you. We read the comments. We've talked a lot about crypto the past few months, but for a good reason. New world-changing technology is super exciting to us. And just ask the members of our Bitcoin Essentials course. You'll thank us later if you listen. But this isn't a point about buying crypto, however, it's about making it. There are two ways you can make crypto, well, besides literally creating your own coin, but we won't go into that. One, you can mine it, and two, you can stake it. We're pretty sure every one of you have heard of mining Bitcoin and you kind of understand what it means, but have you heard of staking your crypto? To simplify the process, staking is an alternative way of validating transactions in the blockchain network. To simplify it even further, you put your coins into one place and get interest over time. Think of it like putting money in a savings account and getting interest in return. Number 6. NFTs If you have no clue what NFTs are, go watch our video explaining them first. You can pause this, click on the top right corner, watch it, and come back. We'll wait. The most expensive NFT sold is Every Days, the first 5,000 days by Beeple for $69.4 million. But even Paris Hilton has managed to sell digital artwork for $17,000. So how can this technology make you rich? It's the perfect answer to the copyright issue and a great way for digital creators to monetize their work. Plus, it's here to stay. Like Gary Vaynerchuk said, everyone will have their own NFT project, just like everyone has a social media account. Understanding supply and demand has never been more important, but please be educated as you spend your time and money. Number 7. VR and AR Virtual reality is still in its early days because the cost of entry is still quite high. Headsets are expensive, plus you need a pretty decent PC to power it. For digital artists, however, this can be the perfect place to set a foothold. Like we said earlier, anytime you have a chance to become an early adopter, you should take it. There aren't that many VR developers running around, but the industry is predicted to hit revenues in excess of $50 billion by 2022. Plus, VR gear will eventually drop in price as the technology advances. So what are you waiting for? Number 8. Internet of Things If you're a young developer, the Internet of Things should be the only thing on your mind. The term might be new to some of you, but here's a little bit of a story. Last year, or in 2020 if you're watching this in the future, Google invested almost half a billion dollars in a home security company. Now, why would Google invest in such a seemingly random company? They play the long game. So, what's the Internet of Things and what makes this story so interesting? The term refers to the network in which devices talk to each other. It's how you can pay with your watch or turn off the lights by yelling at a box or how you can make sure you locked your front door from your phone. Now the Google investment is starting to make sense, isn't it? This network for devices, or Internet of Things, will eventually be the norm. So for developers, knowing how this works and being able to bring value into this field will pay off big time. And for investors, this should give you an idea on what companies to add to your portfolio. Number 9. Podcasting Although not a quick high-income earner, podcasting is a great way to make money online. We mentioned several high earners in our video 15 of the richest podcast hosts, from Leo Laporte earning $50,000 per episode on his podcast, Twit, to Joe Rogan's net worth of $100 million. Podcasters make money through affiliate marketing, sponsorship, ad revenue, courses, services, donations, or premier memberships. As podcaster Jordan Harbinger said, most people that I know are interested in on-demand stuff. Podcasts are essentially audio Netflix. Number 10. Social Media We decided to include this as a last point because there is something worth mentioning here. Social media gets a bad rap because people are straight up using it wrong. They either collectively hate something in a Facebook group or complaining about unrealistic body standards on Instagram. What people don't use social media for is to create an audience. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the whole purpose, right? Connect people around a shared interest. Here's the proper way to use social media. 
In the description, you'll find a link to a Medium article. Give it a read. It's about how a startup got to work with Snoop Dogg in under 48 hours, with no prior connections. Which brings us to today's question. Do you understand the power of technology, or are you using it to watch cat videos? Let us know in the comments. And as a thank you for sticking with us until the end, here's your bonus. You probably heard about the whole GameStop saga by now. If not, look it up. But this brings up something really interesting. Technology made it possible for individuals to get into the investment market in a super easy way. Think about it, you can go from not investing in anything your whole life to owning Apple stocks in like 10 minutes. The world is moving fast, Aluxers. Are you keeping up?